of the day of the feast of the Assumption of Our Lady, the Holy Day of Obligation. We'll be here again in Wisconsin here in the Shano. And the epistle for this feast of the Assumption of Our Lady is taken from the book of Judah, chapter 13. The Lord has blessed you by his power, because by thee he has brought our enemies to naught. Blessed art thou, O daughter, by the Lord of the Most High God, above all women upon the earth. Blessed be the Lord who made heaven and earth, who has directed thee to the cutting off of the head of the prince of our enemies. Because he has so magnified thy name this day, that thy praise shall not depart out of the mouth of men, who shall be mindful of the power of the Lord forever. For that thou hast not spared thy life by reason of the distress and tribulation of thy people, but have prevented our ruin and in the presence of our God. Thou who art the glory of Jerusalem, thou who art the joy of Israel, thou who art the honor of our people. In the Gospel. Take that according to St. Luke, chapter 1. At that time Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And how have I deserved that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? For behold, the moment that the sound of thy greeting came to my ears, the babe my womb leapt for joy, and blessed is she who has believed, because the things promised her by the Lord shall be accomplished. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, because he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaid. For behold, henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Because he was mighty, hath done great things unto me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is from generation to generation upon those who fear him. Thus for the words of today's Holy Gospel. So the Father, the Holy Ghost, amen. Today we have the sacred feast of the victory of our Holy Church. The great victory when the Blessed Virgin Mary is assumed into heaven and the completion of the entire work of, of, of redemption. And I remember that when the Blessed Virgin Mary said these words of the Magnificat, which we, recrease, which we repeat every day at the office of Vespers in the Holy of Holy Breviary, that my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. That when she spoke these words, she was 15 years old. My soul magnifieth, magnifieth the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, because he has regarded the lowliness and humility of his handmaid. For behold, henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, because he who is mighty has done great things unto me, and holy is his name. And here we have a sacred conversation. <coughs> a very sacred conversation. It's the second conversation that takes place. The first conversation is the one that happens between the Blessed Virgin Mary and an angel. The angel Gabriel comes down from heaven. The angel Gabriel comes to the house of the Virgin Mary and says, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Now remember when he said these words, God the Son was not yet trans, uh, 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 hypostatically united to the body of Jesus Christ in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The angel Gabriel is looking at a girl who is 15 years old, who was conceived immaculate, and in the last 15 years of her life has grown in beauty, grown in depth of understanding, grown in the union with God, which was perfect when she began, and now 15 years later is so much more perfect, so much so that when the angel Gabriel looks upon this most beautiful creature of God, he sees I have just left heaven. I have come down to earth, as I have come many times. We open this door in the house of Nazareth, and I see that what I have just left is here already inside of this girl. The Lord is whom I left. And the grace was what sent me from heaven down to earth. And I go to this house of this girl, and I see that she is filled with grace. And I came to bring her a message from the Lord. Whenever the prophets, the angels came to other messages, other, other angels came to other prophets, 
They said, for instance, when the angel spoke in the name of God to Moses, he said to Moses, put off thy shoes, for thou art now in the presence of God. Therefore Moses put off his shoes and came in the presence of God. And when the angels came down and spoke to other prophets, the angels came down and said, this is God. I am a representative of God. And the angel came down to St. John the Apostle. said, I am going to give you the food from God. Take this book and eat it. And the angel came to Daniel and said, Take this book and eat it, for I am going to fill you with the word of God. But on this day, an angel came to a girl who was not yet the mother of God. The angel came to a girl that was so filled with grace and so much in love with God, and God was so much inside of her, that when he came, he was meant to say, I am a messenger from the Lord. But instead he looked at her and he said, The Lord is already with thee. Thou art already full of grace, and blessed art thou amongst all women, because there is so much of God in thee, now consider the angel when he looks at the Blessed Virgin, who is 15 years old, filled with 15 years of the love of God in her heart, 15 years of supernatural faith, 15 years of the contemplation of God, 15 years of a perfect union with God. All he sees is, this is heaven. This is the most beautiful sight. And therefore he says, Ave Maria. Hail Mary, full of grace. When he speaks of this grace, he sees how wonderful that she is. And that is the first conversation. He is a bit distracted because of the beauty of this woman. And that when he sees her, and he sees how full of grace she is, he must compose himself, says Bernard, St. Bernard, to remember what was his message. And he asks her to be the mother of God. And she says, Fiat Miki secundum verbum tu. Let it be done unto me according to thy word. She speaks the most powerful thing. Let it be done. And when she said that, let it be done, all of hell was crushed. Satan's foolish lie that he spoke to all the other devils saying, why should God become man was defeated. St. Michael's prayer was answered who said, Who is like unto God? We do not know who is like unto God. Do not worry who is like unto God. There is no one like unto God. Rather than worry about that, why not just let his will be done? And so therefore she lets his will be done inside of her. Fiat Miki, secundum verbum tuum. And now the Holy Ghost overshadows her. And the power of the Most High overcomes her. And God the Son enters into her womb, and heaven has entered earth. Now what happens? Who knows about it? Only one human being on earth. She has spoken to no one. She has said not a single word. But it was told to her by the angel that her cousin Elizabeth was a child in her old age. Therefore she was driven by the desire of the love of God and the desire to help their neighbor. She was driven by a force that St. Paul would say, Caritas Christi urget nos. The charity of Christ urges us. The charity of Christ pushes us on, forces us to do things that we would perhaps not otherwise do. And driven by the charity of Christ, she goes to her husband, to, to her cousin Elizabeth. And then we have the first conversation. It is the most sacred conversation about Jesus Christ. The first conversation about him, now he has come into the world. And how are we going to learn about him? It's going to come from an innocent and perfect baby who is six months in his mother's womb. And he had the use of reason from the very beginning. And he contemplated God during those six months. And he spoke to God from those during those six months. And now he's six months in his mother's womb, united only to the God. And his ear, which is not yet fully developed, is attuned to the sound and the presence of God. 
And then he hears a voice that he has never heard before. It is the voice of Mary. And that child hears a voice say, Hail Elizabeth, Ave Elizabeth. All that that lady says is, Greetings to Elizabeth. Greetings to my cousin. That's all that she says. And in hearing the word of that greeting, the child knows God is in her voice. God is in her womb. When she speaks, she speaks with the presence of God and not only a spiritual presence, but there is a physical presence of God. God has become flesh and he is in the womb of this girl. And who knows it? The only one that knew it was Mary herself. Because remember, the angel Gabriel went back to heaven. He's an angel. He did not speak to anyone else. He went back to heaven. And when John the Baptist, the greatest of all the prophets, heard the sound of Mary's voice, he recognized Christ is here. And he leapt for joy. This is the response the very first response that after 4,000 years, 4,004 years, we have been waiting for the Messiah to come. And who will be the first one to recognize that he is here and that he, is, he has finally come? And what is the first reaction? It is a reaction of great joy. Now our Lord Jesus Christ is coming a second time. But what does our Lord say about that coming? He says, when you hear about wars and rumors of wars, when you hear about persecution and strange weather and all kinds of hurricanes and earthquakes and all kinds of tragedies, lift up your heads because you know that your redemption is nigh. What is the spirit of faith? Lift up your heads. There's wars and rumors of wars. There's persecution. They're trying to persecute our holy church during this coronavirus excuse to do what? To stamp out Christ. To stamp out Christianity. To stamp out Holy Mother Church. To stamp out our faith and what's left of it. That's what they are striving to do. Lift up your heads. What does the prophet St. John the Baptist do? He cannot yet walk. He cannot yet crawl. He cannot yet speak. But he leaps. He leaps for joy. And this is what we must do inside of our hearts. As we see we're getting closer and closer to the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We're getting closer and closer to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're getting closer and closer to his coming. What do you do when you know the guest is about to come? You decorate the furniture a little bit more. You repair a little bit better. You have a greater expectation that the bridegroom is coming. So we have this second conversation. And what is this second conversation? John the Baptist leaps for joy in his mother's womb, and he communicates to his mother's heart, and she understands. <coughs> and what is it that she says? She has been taught by the prophet, and the prophet is inside of her womb. <coughs> and what does Elizabeth say? For behold, and how have I deserved that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? For behold, the moment that the sound of thy greeting came into my ears, the maid of my <coughs> womb leapt for joy, and blessed is she who has believed. And because the things promised her by the Lord shall be accomplished. Blessed is her who has believed. Why do I have a hope of salvation? Why do I have a hope of happiness? Because she has believed. Because a 15-year-old girl spent her time so well contemplating the sacred scripture of the Old Testament. She spent her time so well with the great prophets of old. She spent her time so well in the knowledge and love of God that when the angel came, she believed. And when she believed, she believed with a belief that can never be defeated. 
We say there is no greater faith than the faith of a mother. When the mother believes, and the mother has confidence, and the mother has absolute, total, total confidence, then whatever she believes, and whatever she has total confidence in, it must happen. And one of the great tragedies of the world today is that mothers don't believe. This is what St. Ambrose had to teach St. Monica. Monica was worried, and Monica shed tears. But Ambrose taught her, if thou believest, Monica, if thou really believest, if thou has the greatest faith that thy proud, thou, thou, your proud and your heretical and your wicked son, filled with the greatest maliciousness, if thou believest, he can repent. And if thou believest, he can leave his impurity. And if thou believest, he can believe it, leave his heresy. And if thou believest, he can leave his pride. And he can leave his lies. And not only will he leave it, he will become the greatest of saints. Ambrose is a wonderful saint in heaven. He sits below Augustine. <coughs> Ambrose bows to Augustine. And Ambrose, the great saint, told Monica, if thou believest, Augustine will become a saint. And he became not only a saint, but the greatest of all the fathers of our holy church. More read and more, and more contemplated than any of all the other fathers combined. He is part of our holy bravery. He's part of the blood and fabric of our church. He is, the, he is our sign of rejoicing. And where did it come from? The belief of a mother. Because she has believed. And Elizabeth, the mother, speaks to Mary, the mother. And she says, my child spoke to me, and he has not a voice. My child told me who is inside of your womb. And my child told me that the angels have spoken to you, and it has been told to you what is going to be accomplished. That in your womb there is a child who is going to redeem all of mankind. A child that is going to be the king of kings and lord of lords. A child that is going to conquer the entire world and build an entire kingdom prophesied by Daniel the prophet. That there will come a small pebble, a very little pebble, that's going to hit the great statue of all the kingdoms of the world that is going to destroy them and build a great mountain. And the great mountain is going to be built by the king that is in your womb. And the Satan is going to be conquered by the, by the God that is in your womb. And the blood of Christ inside of your womb is going to wipe away all sin. And there is going to be a total victory. And Mary believed. She believed. From that faith comes all that we call faith. And from her confidence come all that we call confidence. And Elizabeth, the mother, understood and therefore she said to the mother of God, How is it that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? For at the sound of thy greeting, what greeting? Ave, Elizabeth. Just a simple hello. In that simple hello, she found God. In that simple hello, she saw the mother of her Lord and the babe in her womb left for joy. His original sin that he was conceived with six months earlier was taken from him, and he was made most pure and perfect. And his soul was cleansed, and he was the greatest of all the prophets. That our Lord Jesus Christ would say of him 30 years later, that, that he, was, he was the greatest of all the prophets that's ever been born. And this great prophet prophesied to his mother, and she spoke most wise words. We must consider these words in our present time. Perhaps there are trials down the road. There will be trials in every life. There are difficulties and tribulations ahead of us. There are challenges on the horizon. But do we believe that whatever has been said shall be accomplished? That the Blessed Virgin Mary shall have her victory in the most marvelous way, like she said in Quito 400 years ago? That there is going to be a wiping out of the enemies of God? That they are going to be destroyed? And there is going to be a resurrection of our Holy Mother of the Church. And there will be a great period of peace and a great glory. And Russia shall be consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. 
and that there shall be a victory in our holy church. Do we believe? Notice how Elizabeth said it. My beloved Mary, my cousin, my young cousin, because thou hast already believed in the past tense, because thou hast believed, what thou hast believed shall be accomplished in you and shall be accomplished in our entire world. And what did her son say 30 years later, 31 years later, 32 years later, and 33 years later, during the three years of his public ministry? Almost every time he cured someone, he said, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto you. Do you believe? Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Dost thou believe? As you believe, let it be done unto you. As you believe, let it be done unto you. As you believe, let it be done unto you. Do we really believe? Do we really believe in the holy words of the sacred gospel? Do we really believe in the teaching of our holy mother of the church? Do we really believe in the victory of the blessed Virgin Mary? Do we really believe that Satan has already defeated? Imagine the power in which Jesus Christ spoke in his human flesh. When he said on Holy Thursday night to his apostles, Confidite, ego vici mundum. Have confidence, because I have already conquered the world. This is before he went out to battle. They heard the sound of Mary in his voice. Remember that when we go to battle, when we go to fight, if we don't have our mother in our hearts, we don't have our mother in our being. We are doomed to defeat. But the mother must be inside of us. And what part of the mother is inside of us? Her faith. That's what must be inside of us. Because thou hast believed, Mary, all the things that have been promised of thee shall be accomplished. And then consider the bold words of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And remember when she speaks these words. She is the only person in the world that knows God is in her womb. Joseph does not know. She also knows that Joseph in his great justice will try to put her away privately. He's going to put her, put her away and her life is finished within the next couple of months. But she knows that God is going to find a way to reveal to St. Joseph what needs to be revealed. She knows somehow the child will somehow be born in Bethlehem. She knows that somehow the will of God will be accomplished and she does not know how and she is not worried at all because she knows God knows how. It is enough that he knows how. And for my part, I believe. And I believe with total confidence. And so she believed. And therefore, she said these words that we've repeated down the last 2,000 years. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Notice how the whole world is dark. The whole world is filled with sin. The whole world is filled with wickedness and evil of every type. But she rejoices. There are many tears that we must have. We have a new prayer when I put on the maniple now as a bishop. May I merit the Lord to wear the maniple. <clears throat> Mente flebilis, with a weeping mind, with a tearful mind, so that I might receive the reward of the just and with exultation go into paradise. There are many tears. Some tears are tears of sorrow, but great tears are tears of joy. They are not only tears of sorrow, they are also tears of joy. And there were great tears of joy in St. Elizabeth when the mother of God came unto her. And there is a great rejoicing. And Saint, the Blessed Virgin Mary speaks the most powerful word when the world does not believe. When the world does not, how can she know that this child in her womb is going to conquer the whole world? That she is going, he is going to be the king of kings. That his kingdom shall never end. But she believes. My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Because he has regarded the humility, the lowliness of his handmaid. 
For behold, henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. She said those words 2,000 years and 20 years ago. And we are now several hundreds of generations away from that day. And behold, we call her blessed. And she shall be called blessed until the ending of the world. Because her soul doth magnify the Lord. Her soul is a reflection of the Lord. Her soul increases the Lord. Her soul sends forth the Lord wherever it goes. And her soul magnified the Lord on this very day when she simply said, Ave, Elizabeth. That's all she said. Hail, Elizabeth. And in saying, Hail, Elizabeth, she magnified the Lord. Here she shows the presence of God that must be in all those that love him and follow him. Like it said so often, or it was said in the sacred scripture about the prophet Elias. One day a man was looking for a prophet. And the woman said, I know a prophet. Who is he? I do not know his name. I have never heard him speak. But he walks by my house every day. And I know he is a man of God. He doesn't say a word. He's never performed a miracle for me. He's never preached a single word to me. All he did was walk by my house and walk by my house and walk by my house and behold, God is in him. The presence of God is in him. That's a prophet. I don't know what you heard about these fortune tellers. They are liars. What you heard about these false miracle workers. They are liars. You want a prophet? Go to him. Now the soul of Mary magnifies the Lord just by being Mary. It magnifies the Lord just by speaking, just by standing, just by being herself. She magnifies the Lord. And this magnification must go out into all those that are baptized, all those that receive the holy faith of our gospel, of our true good news of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It must go forth. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoices God my Savior, because he is the Lord of his handmaid. For behold, henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, because he who is mighty has done great things unto me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is from generation to generation upon those who fear him. She saw all the generations to the end of the world. Whoever fears his child in my womb, whoever loves him, they shall receive mercy. No matter how wicked their sins have been, no matter how far they run away from God, they shall receive mercy. And this, 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 this is what is going to happen with this child. Because he was mighty, has brought great things unto me, and holy is his name. The name has not yet been said. She doesn't know his name. He shall be called by St. Joseph. And he shall be called Jesus. She doesn't even know the name that Joseph will give him. But his name shall be Savior. His name shall be Emmanuel. His name shall be God with us. He knows, he knows the seven names given to him in the Old Testament. Adonai, the Lord. And all seven of these names, they are said in the one name of Jesus. And that he, this name is holy. And it, shall, it is most powerful Therefore, how did this lady walk? Satan was petrified to be anywhere near her presence. And hence we see so many times the souls in hell have said it many, many times in their apparitions to souls on earth. They say there is one name that we can never say in hell. There's one name that we never say, and that is the name of her who is the mother of him. We can never say her name. They are too terrified. They are petrified by her name. Because her name magnifies Christ. Her name magnifies God. Her name destroys Satan. And hence all the heretics and all the enemies of God will always, always diminish, attack, and try to in some way destroy Mary. And they all fail. 
because her soul still magnifies the Lord. Her spirit there rejoices in God, her Savior, and the Savior of all of us. His name is still most holy, and he is most mighty. And all generations that fear him, they shall receive mercy until the ending of time. All we must do is believe and ask the grace to believe as she believed. Ambrose is a great saint. But he's not as great as Augustine because his mother did not believe as Augustine's mother believed. If only we could have mothers that believe, really believe, having babies in this modern wicked world with all the internet and all the wickedness and all the terrible things going around us and all the laws and everything becoming illegal. But mothers that believe, if I have a baby in this world, who I am going to teach, like Tobias taught his own son, to fear God rather than men. And this child, who is born of the most wicked of all times, this child shall be able to know, he shall be able to love, he shall be able to serve God, he shall be able to be a member of the army of God, and he shall be able to defeat Satan and stand against him in the last days. No matter how wicked this world is, we need mothers that have believed, not are trying to believe, not hope one day to believe, but who have already believed. Thou hast believed what the angel said to thee. Thou hast believed all the promises, Mary. Therefore the mother Elizabeth tells her, my son is able to preach to me. My son is able to teach me. My son is able to jump for joy. My son is able to be the greatest of the prophets. Why? Because the mother has believed. Let's pray for mothers who can believe and have a deep faith and a faith that can take their children who have wandered away from God back to God and then can make the mothers remember the devil is the one who hates mothers more than anything else and mothers have the greatest power to destroy Satan if only they can have a deep, true, and unbending and unmovable faith. Believe us, you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.